Excellency Roger Nkododang, President of the Pan-African Parliament, Excellencies, speakers of the National Assemblies from around Africa, here present, honorable members of the Pan-African Parliament, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. I want to wish a good morning to all of you and a very warm welcome to Kigali. We are honored to serve as host for the first ordinary session of the fifth parliament. Please consider Rwanda as your home during, <laughs> during your weeks ahead. I hope that your busy schedule will allow you to get to know our country and our people. I wish to thank you for the work that you do. The Pan-African Parliament serves as a point of connection joining Africa's legislators and citizens they represent to the African Union organs. I therefore commend the breadth of your agenda for this session, including a model law on disability, a conference on women's rights, as well as substantive reports on nutrition, corruption, election observation, and the African peer review mechanism, APRM. The impact of your work in this body is multiplied by your dual role as members of your respective national legislators. We count on you to be strong advocates for African integration, more especially I would like to ask for your support for the speedy ratification of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, the protocol on the free movement of persons and other key pillars of Agenda 2063. The entry into force of these historic compacts will do more than almost anything else to accelerate economic growth and shatter outdated perceptions of our continent. We cannot afford to squander the momentum we have gained. But we need your help to communicate more effectively with constituents and stakeholders in the civil society about the importance of these agreements for the well-being of our citizens and our economies. Let me say a few more words about the state of Africa and the African Union. Important changes are underway on our continent and in the wider world, and we have to be ready 
to meet them. It is about getting our house in order. Do what is right for our people. And speaking with one voice to advance Africa's interests. Working together is the only way to give Africa's position the weight it should have in the wider geopolitical context. At the same time, illusions of a moral hierarchy that divided continents and peoples are crumbling rapidly as we have been seeing. Responsibility for Africa's security and prosperity is and should be firmly in our hands. We must meet the imperative of good governance with innovations and solutions drawn from Africa's rich experiences and cultures, even as we remain open to benefiting from the best global insights. This reality is the background to the financial and institutional reform of the African Union that has been underway for the last few years. As a result, our union is stronger than ever. Next year's budget is 12% smaller, while the share of funds supplied by member states has significantly increased. Contributions to the Peace Fund are running at the highest level since its creation in 1993, allowing Africa and our partners to push for an ambitious new partnership with the United Nations that will provide stable funding for peace support operations. Next month, we will convene in Addis Ababa for an extraordinary summit to finalize implementation of the institutional reform where we have also seen good progress this year. We very much welcome your active participation and engagement in this process. You are much more than interested observers. I would like to take this opportunity to call on the Pan-African Parliament to play a bigger role in monitoring and accompanying political progress on our continent and holding institutions to account for the commitments that have been made to Africa's citizens. Excellencies, honorable members of the Pan-African Parliament, I wish you productive deliberations and I thank you for your kind attention.